audience. Uh, my name is Heli Kapikov and I am the programming manager of the EA50 conference. I would just uh, shortly like to tell you three things before we start with our first keynote. Uh, first, if you haven't done it yet, please register uh, at the conference webpage because this gives you a really nice opportunity to communicate uh, with the speakers as well with the audience. Uh, second, um, whatever is happening here uh, today and tomorrow, please share it in your social media. And third, we will pick some of the, the quotes and uh, feedback um, and put it to our media wall. And this will help me and Stan to put together the final speech for the tomorrow. Thank you for this. And now I'm inviting here our first keynote speaker, a true technology visionary, Linnar Wick. Thank you so much. It was, it was certainly a number of uh, good thoughts we just heard. You know, between you and the truly substantive discussion today stands only my keynote. So I don't want to waste your time, but to bring up some of the key trends which I can see right now on the horizon of digital transformations. First of all, one thought which uh, we all know, but we always forget to, or tend to forget, is the fact that uh, human nature tends to overreact on short term to all new phenomena. And in the same time, it tends to underestimate the true impact of certain long-term trends. And I think this is exactly what has happened also so often when we talk about disruptive digital technologies. Information and communication technologies have been here for already quite some time. And the expectations of the power of IT have been articulated out in all the sectors around the world. Some sectors have been really a subject for total disruption. Not only the impact of information and communication technologies to the sector core structure, the core of the business, the core of the concept itself, but also the environment where that sector is, has been established. For many thoughts, because of the legacy, for many thoughts because of the way how we think traditionally, and, uh, and that once again brings me back to the comparative area of different sectors being impacted by digital technologies. Let's take the same news media. If we can think about content industry around the world that has been truly impacted, radically impacted by digital technologies, it's clearly the news industry. And yes, you can see it clearly struggling day after day, year after year, already for two decades to reinvent its core, and they have not found the true way how to survive, how to work in the, in the extremely cross-border, competitive, and disrupted ecosystem. They have not been able neither to consolidate, neither to find their true business angle, and and it's hard to imagine how they would. TV, yes, we know how they struggled. Education is very different in year 2015, not only in kindergartens, primary schools, secondary schools, colleges, universities, science, all the higher education is struggling with the disruptive digital technologies, despite the fact that education is a slow cycle sector. 
when we do something today, we see the impact and the output maybe in 10, 15 years. Very similar healthcare industry. Over the last few years, they have started truly to, to feel the pain and impact and struggle around the digital transformation. Commerce, books, take any sector and you can see how they have been impacted with the digital transformation and how one can say that the life no longer remains the same in those sectors. But when we take a look to the statistics and try to have a kind of helicopter view on the movie industry on the worldwide level, we haven't really seen an objective statistic that would say that movie industry has lost, say, an 80% of the viewers as paper media, or they have been losing all of the primary revenue sources as many other sectors have lost within the uh, business model. It rather remains uh, flat, it grows in some areas, and uh, on my recent visit to, to Portugal, a local filmmaker who took me to the local vineyard said that, well, movie industry for me is uh, similar to the winery. You remember, 2005 was a very good movie year. And 2009 was not so good movie year for the box office. But we expect 2015, as also the same vineyard here expects 2015, to be a very good year. So it remains stable. One thing that movie industry has really gaining is actually the way how the viewers have been stick to two factors, to the narrative and storytelling of audiovisual means, and secondly, the habit of screen time, which has not been lost in the viewer's mind. People spend more time than ever in human history in front of the glooming screen with audiovisual content. They have not lost it. They have lost many things. They have lost the ability sometimes for the handwriting or for the writing itself. Reading and understanding the content, but they have certainly not lost the appealing factor of a uh, story being told with an uh, audiovisual means. That is a remarkable, and this has not, for many observers have said, thanks to movie industry, but thanks to the digital technologies which have been enabling us to view an animated GIFs as a way of storytelling with a length of one and a half second, or vines with a length of six second, as the tools of audiovisual appealing, storytelling, or many, many, many other forms. And within that environment, the concept of movie stands still by itself and has its role. It's especially important that when we talk about social demographic battle, then we know that the technology generation is a lost generation for most of the existing industries around the world. It's not the same for the movie industry. It's m the most overrepresented social demographic segment in movie industry revenue. Those people who own average 5.2 digital gadgets and who represent only maybe 28-30% of the movie watching population, 
they represent good 40%. In some countries, almost 50% of the revenues that movie industry is gaining. Despite the fact that they are popcorn time generation, they have seen those movies online, but they go still to the cinemas to have the experience. They are something on which you and we all need to be thankful because movie industry could not remain the same without the trust and loyalty of that generation who has actually many other opportunities and is the biggest information consumer generator, but also a lead generator, also a reference generator of the modern society. I have been speaking to many of my students around the years about the access to the content. And they see no problems, actually. They see all the movies in cinemas, if they wish. They see them online. They found torrents, if they wish. They find them somehow. They watch a lot of audiovisual content. And they feel... For, for them, it's very natural to pay for the movie ticket and also, if available, to pay for the stream a fair amount of the money. If it's available. And, and that's a key word. If it's available. If, if it's not available, it won't stop you. So the viewers won't see the problem right now. Name a movie ask, have you seen it, and the hands will raise. Where have you seen that movie? It's not in the cinemas. Well, we, it's, it's obvious. We have seen it just. Somebody sent me a link, and it worked, and I watched it, and it was, it was not so good. Oh, it was, it was good. And we discussed about it later on. Let's not forget the viewer's perspective and be thankful for the fact that they uh, still appealed, appealed with what we create. From the creator's perspective and distributor's perspective, I can understand very much the pain and, uh, and maybe the situation where the uncertainty has started to take over from the certainty. Uncertainty is something which nobody feels comfortable. It's a very uncomfortable situation. We can't help unless we do something, and that's maybe another key word uh, for the future. Whatever is a solution is not in somebody else's hand. It's not in the hands of the lawmaker to change something in the copyright legislation. It's, uh, it's actions taken by industry itself which drive you towards Opportunities driven by some minimum and small certainty. Small wins every day, small steps every day take you forward faster than expectation for the one big change to happen. To conclude, my key word when I have been, as an Erasmus professor, I have had an, a rare opportunity to lecture for the last 10 years in... Uh, in altogether almost 50 European universities. In the same domain, innovation management, and, and part of that, of course, is a, is a creativity, part of that innovation management. When asking, have you seen a recently a good Spanish movie? If you ask it in, in France, no. Name a Greece movie, no. Name a Swedish movie, no. And, and that's a pity. We have so much good content available. And my students propose it. Why won't we, you, somebody, make a movie Eurovision where 
Every country would vote one movie every year to go out to a commons because it's paid anyway by the taxpayer, at least by 60 to 80 percent of the movie budget in Europe. Put it out to the commons, put a good subtitles under that, and make it publicly available, and then see how many people would actually access those good movies of European industry every year, and what will be the impact of that. I'm very certain there will be no impact on the big scale on the movie industry revenues, but it will be a huge step towards a viewer's perspective to understand that there is and exists something called European movie, which only a very fragmented and small amount of society is currently aware of. Thinking less of regulatory environment driven solutions and thinking more users' perspective driven solutions is, I think, the key word towards a better accessible and popular European movie future. Thank you so much.